Okay, you're welcome. We want to look at uh, some uh, practice questions in domain two. So we we'll look at question one. Governance of enterprise IT is primarily about uh, aligning IT with the business processes, involving the board of directors in IT operations, placing the chief CIO on the board of directors, eliminating IT and emerging risks. So let's just remove three, uh, D. Okay, because you can't eliminate risk, you can only manage risk. So D is out. Okay, uh, placing the CIO on the board of directors is important. Uh, evolving the board of directors in IT operations, we should knock that one out also, because uh, COVID tells us that we should separate governance from management. So uh, IT operations is, 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 is basically um, management uh, uh, issues okay so uh, man IT management should focus on operations why the board should focus on, on governance of IT so B2 is out so the best answer basically is A okay IT should be aligned with the business processes IT should be used to drive the business objective of the organization all right uh, the second question Risk avoidance strategy requires transferring IT risk to insurance companies, shutting down processes that generate risk above the residual level, applying IT controls to, residual, to reduce risk, acceptance of risk by doing nothing. All right, A is risk transfer, C is risk mitigation, D is risk acceptance, so the, the B is risk avoidance. So you shut down the process or avoid implementing processes that will create risk, all right? But that also means you lose out on the benefits. So you have to choose risk avoidance strategy very carefully. So B is the answer here. Uh, third question, to be effective, IT balance scorecard primarily requires key performance indicators, documentation of IT goals, understanding of business strategy, quarterly review of performance, Incidentally, all of them are correct, okay? But the question is primarily. So for IT balance scorecard to be effective, the goals, the KPIs, the performance objectives must be aligned to the business goals. So the best answer is C, okay? We are giving IT goals that will help IT to achieve the business goals. So the answer here is C. Okay, question four. An IS auditor reviewing the IS budget must confirm that it is based on strategic IT plan. It is prepared using zero-based budgeting. Uh, it, it can support the business for the year. It's flexible and adaptable to changes in technologies. All right, so uh, B is definitely out, okay, because IS auditor is not supposed to be insisting on a particular method, okay? So the organization should use the budgeting tech methodology that is best suited for it. Okay, uh, it is based on strategic IT plan, which is correct, but ultimately IS budget must support the business, the business objective. So whatever spending you have in the budget must be able to derive the business. And since budget most, most of the time are annual, okay, in terms of time, time frame. So you should be able to help the business to achieve its objective for that year and beyond. So the best answer here is C. Okay, question five. Which of the following is an outcome of effective information security governance? Performance measurement, resource management, process integration, risk management. Now, these are textbook questions from uh, CISA Review Manual, and ISACA is have the right to pick questions from the from CISA Review Manual. That's why it's good to also study CISA Review Manual as part of your preparation. Okay, so A, B, C are uh, enablers, okay, for you to achieve information security governance, you need to measure performance, you need to manage your resources, you need to integrate your assurance function. But the outcome of that, of uh, information security governance is one of the outcome is uh, risk management. Your risk uh, profile, okay, will be, will, will be in, uh, in sync with your residual risk when you have information security governance. Answer here is D. Okay, uh, which of the following frameworks can best be used to review governance practices with respect to IT service management specifically? A, ISO 22301, that is on business continuity. ISO 27001, that is on information security management systems. ISO 20000 is specifically on IT service management. COSO is on enterprise uh, risk management and internal controls. Okay, so ISO 20000 is your answer here. So the answer is C. Okay, question seven, which of the following will most likely be approved by the board of directors? IS standards, IS policies, IS procedures, IS guidelines. A, C, and D are operational documents. So is the, the, is, they can be approved at the departmental level, okay? But policies and strategies 
are governance documentations. Documentations, so they must be approved by the board of directors. Okay, so the answer here is B. Okay, uh, question eight, membership of the IT strategy committee will be largely drawn from the line managers, IT group, custodians, board of directors. The answer is D. Strategy committee is a subcommittee of the board of directors. Okay, though you may have non-members of the board who are IT experts, but basically the answer is D, board of directors. Okay, uh, question nine, which of the following roles can be combined within a data center? A, database administrator and system administrator, application programmer and computer operations, system analyst and application programmer, database administrator and end user. Okay, A is out. You can be a data DBA and same time be a system admin. That will be giving you too much power in the organization. B is also wrong. You cannot develop an application and be the one to run the application in the, in the live environment. Okay, D is wrong. You cannot be a database, all right, having access to the back end and being an end user, having access to the front end. All right, but you can be a system analyst. You can gather requirements and be also the one that will develop the application, no problem. So the answer is C, okay? Uh, question 10, uh, if segregation of duties cannot be enforced, that should be implemented. Corrective controls, background checks, continuous monitoring, compensating controls. Of course, the answer here is D. Okay, once you don't have segregation of duties, maybe in a small organization, you need to have controls to compensate for that. Okay, so the answer is D. Uh, question 11, which of the following can give best insights to segregation of duties practices in an organization? How do you know that there is a so segregation of duty? Okay, business plan, IS security policy, IS strategy, organizational chart. Business plan, okay, we need address segregation of duties, no. IS security policy, all right, will it give you the insights on how segregation of duties uh, is uh, pans out in the organization? No, it will only tell you that there are segregation of duties, okay. Uh, do it to give some information, but the question is best. Okay, IS strategy will not uh, address segregation of duty. Okay, uh, so the, your best answer is organizational chart. Okay, it 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 is the organizational chart will show you the implementation of the the sections, the clauses in this IS security policy. You will see authorities. You will see reporting lines. You will see. Um, uh, number of staff required in a particular department or unit. So uh, on paper, before you now check on the real life, okay, at least organizational chart will give out of all these four options, the best one that will give you the most illustrative picture of what is going on as per segregation of duty is the organogram of the organization of, of a particular department. So the best answer here is definitely D. Okay, question 12. The possibility of fire incident occurring at the data center is estimated to be twice in four years. The annual rate of occurrence ARO in single loss expectancy calculation is, so how do you calculate annual rate of occurrence? You look at the, the events, how many times will it happen all over the number of years? So it will happen twice, that is two over number of years, four. Two over four is half, that is 0.5. So your answer here is definitely C, two, four, and eight, okay, are just uh, distraction. Okay, the answer here is C. So remember I said annual rate of occurrence is just frequency. The number of time the event will happen over the number of years uh, we are looking at. So this two all over four, which is 0.5. Uh, 13, the user pay scheme is primarily really used to A, align IT with the business objective, control IT expenses, create IS budget, uh, manage IS projects. The best answer here is control IT expenses. Users are charged. User departments are charged based on how they consume IT services. So uh, you are charged. So because you know you are going to be charged, you don't make spurious demands on IT. So best answer is uh, B, control IT expenses. Question 14. Uh, the risk of a developer vendor going out of business is best managed through software escrow, digital rights management, service level agreement, request for proposal. Best. All right, digital management is talking, it will be addressing things like uh, copyright uh, issues, service level agreements. Of course, service, SLA is correct. All right, but the SLA specifically, what addresses a vendor going out of, uh, a developer going out of business is software escrow. Keep the source code with a third party. Okay, so request for proposal is used to 
uh, invite vendors, the, 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 the vendor organization to respond to the requirements of the organization. So the best answer here is definitely a specifically addressing the vendor going out of business. You can go to the escrow agent to get copies of the source code. The best answer here is A. Okay, question 15, vicarious liability risk in an outsourcing relationship is best managed through right to audit provisions, indemnity clauses in the contract, confidentiality agreements, violation reporting, and follow up. Now, this is testing your legal understanding, your, legal, your understanding of legal, legal terms in outsourcing contracts. So what is vicarious liability? Vicarious liability means that a master can be held responsible for the wrongdoing of a servant which is very, very applicable in, 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 in vendor uh, in outsourcing contracts, okay? So the vendor can make a mistake which the, the, the client will, will be held liable. So how do you safeguard yourself? B, indemnity clauses in the contract. So you have to indemnify yourself against such uh, fallouts. So B is your best answer here. Yeah? Question 16, which of the following is primarily a tool for performance optimization? performance optimization, benchmarking, SWOT analysis, generalized audit software, IS budget. So benchmarking means you, where are we, compare with the leader in the industry. SWOT analysis is used for strategy, okay? Our strengths versus our weakness, our opportunities, our threats. How can we uh, take advantage of the opportunity while guiding against the threats? That's, that asks, you know, it's, it's more of strategy, planning. Okay, GAS is used in audits. IS budget is also used in, in strategy. Okay, so your best answer here is A. Okay, what, what is the industry leader doing? How can we close the gap? So the best answer here is definitely A. Okay, question 17, which of the following is most effective in IT risk management? Um, the risk reduction strategy apply. Regular updates of the risk register documentation of IT assets. Uh, preference for quantitative risk analysis. So the question is, which of the following is most effective, all right, in uh, IT uh, risk management? So is this the risk reduction uh, strategy that is being applied or the regular updates of the risk register or the documentation of IT assets or the uh, choosing quantitative uh, risk analysis over qualitative risk analysis? Now, the, the, the best answer here is definitely C, okay? Uh, the documentation of IT assets, okay? Because the, 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 the uh, effectiveness of your risk management strategy is going to be dependent on the inventory of the IT assets. So if you don't have a picture of all the assets in the organization, how do you determine their vulnerability? How do you determine the threats? that they are exposed to. So even your risk register will not be complete. Your risk reduction strategy, all right, would not be effective, okay, because you don't have the, you know, the, the, the an inventory of all the assets that you, 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 you know, you are controlling or that is in your organization. So IT asset documentation is very, very, very key uh, where we are talking about it. Uh, risk management it is when your IT asset is completely documented that we can now start looking at their vulnerability, we can start looking at uh, the threats that uh, can attack those uh, IT assets. So IT asset documentation is very key in uh, risk management. Question 18, risk assessment include risk treatment, risk tolerance, risk capital, risk identification. So we need to know risk assessment basically consists of three things, risk identification, risk analysis, and uh, risk evaluation. Those are the three things that make up risk assessment. So out of uh, all these four options, the only answer here uh, is D, risk identification. The other two are risk analysis and risk evaluation, which are not here. Okay, so the answer here is D, risk treatment is the method you choose to to treat the risk avoidance, acceptance, mitigation, transfer. Risk tolerance is the uh, risk you are able to accept uh, above your residual risk level. And of course, risk appetite is the, um, the risk you are willing to accept uh, as an organization, okay? The risk that you are willing uh, to, the loss you are, you, are, you are willing to suffer in the pursuit of your business objective, 
Okay, so risk assessment include risk identification. That's the uh, question 19. Which of the following is a preventive control in HR practices? Okay, annual appraiser, uh, compensation audit, review of attendance registers, uh, background check. So which of them is a preventive control? Annual appraiser basically, you know, is, is a check, you know, which is done at the end of the year or in the middle of the year. So that's not a preventive control. Compensation audit is detective as after the fact. Review of attendance register is also detective. You are checking whether people are signing in, you are checking whether people are coming to work. Okay, so it's also detective. So it's only background check here that is uh, a, uh, a preventive uh, control, you know, in HR. Okay, question 20, which of the following is the best indicator that a risk should be accepted by management, okay? Uh, a, the risk is below the risk capacity threshold. Uh, the impact of the risk cannot be reasonably determined. The risk is classified as an EIN risk. Cost of treating the risk exceeds the single loss expectancy. So let's look at A, the risk is below the risk capacity. Risk capacity threshold is a risk or loss you are, you know, you are able to absorb as an organization, but that does not mean you should, you should absorb, you should allow yourself to, to suffer such a loss, okay? And the fact that the risk is below your risk capacity does not mean that it is within your risk appetite. So A is out. So the impact of the risk cannot be reasonably determined. So why will you accept such a risk when you don't know the, what the extent of the impact is going to be? So that means you are being reckless, okay? Then, um, the risk is as far as an EN risk. So the fact that it's an EN risk does it mean that you should accept it? Fraud is EN risk to banks. Should they just accept it that well, fraud must happen? So the answer is no. So C is out. So the best answer here is D, okay? If the cost of treating the risk is above your single loss expectancy for a year, why would you, okay, what you are, you are, you are exposed to the tune of $10,000 in a year on a particular information asset, and the cost of protecting the asset for a year is $20,000. Why would you protect such an asset? It means you are over-investing in controls. So in a situation like that, it's better you accept the risk. So th this is, like I said, this is basically uh, a review of practice questions uh, on domain two, which is, is to help you to review some of the concepts we have learned and uh, to also prepare you for the live exam uh, when you write the CISA paper. Thank you.